afternoon, good evening, whoever and wherever you are. This is Coach Lee, and we're working on speech anxiety in all its forms. I'm talking with Marshall. Say hello, Marshall. Hello, Marshall. And Marshall is from Florida, and she is a medical doctor, a kidney specialist, an internist, and a chief medical officer somewhere. And she started stuttering at age 14. And um, she mainly does repeats, blocks, and skipped words, primarily in boardrooms, I'll say. And she's joined WSSA, and she's had no other therapies. Her family has uh, some other people who stutter in it, which is not common. I find maybe three quarters of our stutterers, there's no other stutterer in the family. So really, really? It, it's, there's nothing genetic about stuttering, nothing. Now there's monkey see, monkey do. If your father or your brother or something is a, a serious stutterer, you can pick it up. I've had two families where at every child, one of them was five kids, one was seven, they all stuttered. And when, when, when the oldest one stopped, they all stopped. No. So, no, um, that's, that's so interesting because on my father, so my father's a physician, all of his brothers are physicians, and all of the brothers stuttered. Geez. The sisters, not, there's six of them. Are they still I'm, stuttering now? They're still stuttering no, now? No, they're not. My father, um, he's still, you know, he's still working. He, he's an inventor. He's an ophthalmologist, eye doctor. And his stuttering got better over time. And now um, he publicly speaks, doesn't even think twice about it. Yeah. He may stutter a little bit now and then if he speaks rapidly. Um, and my son stutters, and I think he should join your group. Um, well, I think I think he should. Because his stuttering is, is... Well, how old is your... Wait a minute. It's, it's not up to you. Your son is over 21. He's over 21, correct. And... He's of the mindset, so he's he's um he's a chemist, and he's he's applying to medical school actually, but um but I think he's of the mindset which I have to help him. He's of the mindset that this doesn't matter somehow, but well, I, it it, and it, that's, it doesn't matter except it's inconvenient for other people. You know, we got to think it's not just about us. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have to deal with people. They have lives, they're busy, and they yeah. don't have time for this. And it's nonsense, and they can beat it. And I mean, if you had a word on the end of your nose the size of a quarter, you could leave it there, or you, or maybe you could simply take it off. But why right. not take it off? You know, right. so. Right. No, exactly, because I think it does, not to get on his his situation, but I think it does limit some of his options it, and that kind of, and I don't want to say that, but I but I think that there's some truth in that. Well, and, I think you should say it because look, you're trying to help them. And you know, if if somebody you love has bad breath, you're not helping them by not telling them. <laughs> you say, hey, brush exactly. your teeth, man, and gargle. You know. And the one thing he says is what you say too. He says, Mom, when I'm taking a shower and singing, I never stutter. Of course not. 99% of all stutterers can sing without, and I used to sing like for money when I stuttered. I sung solos, duets, trios, quartets, and in choirs as solos too. I never had any problem stuttering, except when I was talking. Exactly. And then, and you can tell he's so much happier when he sings because he, you know, he doesn't like to stutter, yet I think it's important for him to to deal with it and to overcome it if he can. Now, I have a daughter who doesn't stutter at all. So I have a son and a daughter, and my daughter doesn't stutter at all, and my son stutters. What is the nature of your son stuttering? Is it re 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 repeats, or is it forced words, or is it I would say both. I would say both, and I would say he is a moderate stutterer. He's gotten better. He's gotten better, but um, um, his stuttering, as a child, he was pretty good. But I think as he moved into high school, 
he all similar to me, maybe, I guess, you know, his stuttering got a little bit worse. Um, well, look, you should just say, look, it is silly for you to yeah. continue with this problem when exactly. in fact yeah. you can convert stuttering into a blessing. You can make yourself into a, the best speaker you know personally mm -hmm. everywhere if you want to. And that's not overreaching. And I say this to everybody I work with because you can do it and I can prove it. So just let's do it and put this nonsense behind us and improve yeah. our lives. But then let's, like you say, let's attack anxiety and anger and a few other things yeah. uh, in the process. You know, I have 13 grandchildren and they're teens tw and 20s. And and um, I have, I pay them, those who will let me, um, a sum that's enough to interest them to do mind training. And they do it and they sweat. Now they, I've been doing it, I started doing it in January. Well, here we are in June, and they're loving it. <laughs> they're loving it. It's changing their lives. They're much happier every time I talk to them. I mean, look, basically, we're in control of our moods. It's, yes, it takes two to have an argument. It does. It refuse it does. to be one. If you, don't, yeah. if you refuse to be the other person, there's not going to be any arguments in your life. There can be some people screaming and doing insane things, but that's their problem, not yours. Exactly, exactly. And that doctor who was screaming at me, it didn't upset me whatsoever. And I was just trying to de-escalate. And then finally I saw something click in his head. I could see in his eyes, he clicked and went, oh my God, I am ridiculous. You know, they they you know, realize how silly it is. They realize and he says, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Cause I think, and this is a doctor who's probably in his seventies. You would think he would have a little personal control by now, you would think. Um, and it hurts him. It hurts his practice. It hurts sure his it relationships. Does. And it took him an hour talking to me after that and wasting his time to try to de-escalate it. And when I watched him, I was, oh my goodness. I was, you know, because he wasn't even making sense. Well, so, um, but it takes look, two I think you should, you yeah. should lean on your son and say, look, there have been some changes in the stuttering world. There have been people who figured this thing out, and there are people who used to stutter, and and I know one of them, and they got an organization, and they've helped hundreds of people. You can see them, you can look at their videos, you can read their stories, you can meet some of them. If you go to the Sam meetings on Saturday, you can actually talk to some of these people. Yep. And we're all and we're all different people. We got a bunch of I've dealt with a bunch of doctors. You're not my first MD. I'll tell you that. And uh, we we got everything. We got bricklayers and and cab drivers and 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 uh, professors. Uh, we got we have preachers, ministers, uh, you name it. We got we got them all, and it's great. And the good news is it works for everybody. Now, so you tell your son that and just say you're being foolish, in my opinion, not to take your stuttering and convert it into a blessing. That's what I'm doing. And I'm going to finish it. I'm, 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 I'm getting, mo I've moved down the road quite a way and I'm going to finish this thing and I'm going to do it. And my life's going to be better. And I'm going to be, in my opinion, as good as any speaker in the boardroom, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And listen, you can practice specific things you're going to say. If you want, you can practice them with me or some other coach if you want to, but the key is doing what you're doing. Now, Coming back to you specifically, yeah. uh, the last time we talked, we drilled hum linking. Uh, I know I, we, we, we talked about short link stop, right. short link stop. And, right. and, and we urged you to find pressure situations and use it. I made a note to myself to uh, drill hum linking next time with you because I didn't think you were doing that quite as effectively mm -hmm. as you should. Mm -hmm. But what you said at the beginning, um, in humming and linking is something very valuable to know. If you know that, you'll never wipe out. You may be hesitant, a little choppy, but you'll never wipe out as long as you know that. So it's worth working on that. You said something else at the very beginning uh, before I think we were recording, and that is you were talking slower and softly. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you, Marshall, how many people uh, we have helped simply by getting them to slow down. Mm -hmm. 
talking softly. When you talk softly, you feel less pressure. I'm in my soft voice now. If I whisper, I have even less pressure. And sometimes when I used to give speeches and I was very nervous, I would talk in my soft voice. Sometimes I even whisper. If I came to something that was looked very hard to say, I might whisper it right into the mic, get closer to the mic. Metaphysics, you know, soft voice, it's easier to talk. Slow down, it's easier to talk. Short increments, even more so, make it easier to talk. The shorter your increments of speech, easier it is to talk. And no one will think that your speech is strange at all, even when you're speaking in short increments of one to three words or so, as I am doing now, it sounds quite normal, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. Short I was practicing minutes. in the car with my husband and because he speaks rapidly on meetings and it's hard for people to absorb. So I was practicing doing short, exactly what you're saying. So I was trying to read and doing short increments, but I have to tell you, it worked nicely last week. And I even scared myself how nicely it was working. So, <laughs> so what I was <laughs> So when I was doing it, you had this group of people like all leaning in and I said, this is fun. Look at this. It's actually working. But I had to back off of thinking that because then you could lose your track. Don't be. Listen, I don't want you. Look. You you look at me. I used to stutter seriously. And have you been to Sam yet? I don't remember. Have yeah, been I've been there once. OK, well, you when you're at Sam, you're listening to some people who were some of those people were terrible stutterers. I mean, every word they were, they couldn't communicate hardly at all. Some, wow. some of those people, I mean, really wipe out stutterers. And they're talking as well as you're talking right now. Right now. And so those people are amazing. And you, so the, the point, it worked. You say it worked nicely last week. I don't it want did. you to be surprised at that. I want you to be surprised if it doesn't even for a second. Then I want you to be surprised. Then I want you to shut your mouth. And then I want you to think and take a two count, 1,001, 1,002. And then when you start again, lower your voice. Slow down more. Right. Make your increments of words shorter. Say things with a smile if you can. Yes, yeah, smile helps. Say them in a way that conveys your feelings about what you're saying. Be a salesperson, oh, be an actress, mm -hmm. be Juliet, you know, sell it. Sure, What's I, agree. I agree. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. She said. What's in a name, Montague or Capulet? There's nothing in the name. There's nothing in words, but what they mean, that's what's important. Mm -hmm. And that's how you say them. Now, I, I have, have I asked you to read to me? You, you did, and you told me I ignore punctuation. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think, you should, I think you should read a little bit more to me. Let's see how you're doing this week. Do you know the one I really liked that you sent me? I thought that was fantastic. Do you know, remember, so it's in my hand right now. Smile Music by Charlie Chaplin. Perfect, I'm going go to go Don't you right absolutely now. love that? Okay, well then I that's... Mean, it's very, insp it's so inspirational and not the easiest thing to do in life. No, of course not. Do you know I who mean, Charlie Chaplin was? Do you know who yeah, he was? Yeah, Charlie Chaplin, yeah. 
Okay, well, not everybody does, believe me. Really? I got people who never heard of Irving Berlin or the song White Christmas. Seriously. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, Charlie Chaplin, I think most people, you know, most people. Well, most people your age. I see you're right. If I ask my daughter. Your daughter will not know who he was. Let me ask her when she, yeah, so I'm going to ask her today. I'll bet you a dollar to a donut. <laughs> She, she will not know. know who Charlie Chaplin was. <laughs> okay, so you're on the griddle. Great. You're on the griddle. And then uh, the one that brings tears to my eyes. I don't know if I can even read it. But let's see if I have it here. Um, I'm sorry, because I printed it out. The one about, oh, that's so sad, silent words. Oh, yes. That's silent horrible. Words. I don't think I can do it without crying. I mean, that's, do you know what I mean? That's. Of course I do. I picked it out. I, I found it. It was published online on the stuttering community um, years ago, about seven years ago on stuttering day, on, on national stuttering day. And so, or week. And they, this, this girl whose uncle's name was Alan Pritchard, Set, he, he is a poet, obviously, and a very good one. She asked him if he could write something. She stutters, obviously. And he asked, she asked him if he could write something for her for Stuttering Day. And he wrote this brilliant, brilliant, heart-wrenching, heart sensitive, introspective, perceptive, profound, beautifully metered and rhymed, classic poem. Why don't you read that to me? Oh, it's awful. And then, yeah, I'll read. Oh, all right. Or do you want to read Smile to me first? That's your smile. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought Smile was I don't want to make you cry. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Smile. Smile though your heart is aching. Smile even though it's breaking. Through, though there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by if you smile through your fears and sorrows. Smile, and maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through. If you just light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever, ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what is the use of crying? You'll find life is worthwhile if you just smile. Come on and smile, if you just smile. Now, I could do it better, I need, I, I practice. I know you can. On half the poem, you got a, you got a, a nine, and on right. the other half, yeah, you got, got a, a five. Yeah, five or one, and, yes. And the reason is, on the, on, the, on the bad half, you hurried. I hurried. You ignored I the punctuation. You ignored the breaks. Yeah, and yeah. Why didn't you get a 10? Because you weren't thinking the message as much as yeah. you're capable of thinking it. Agreed. You were thinking it, but yeah. not as much as you're capable of thinking it. Yeah, true. All right. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Okay. And nothing is perfect, and I certainly don't hold myself out as perfect in anything, but I've, do, I've done it more than you have. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. Though there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fears and sorrows, smile. And maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through. If you just light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness, although a tear may be ever, ever so near. That's the time you must keep on trying Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find life is worthwhile 
If you'll just smile, come on and smile. If you'll just smile. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah. It's being possessed by the message. When you speak to a boardroom, mm. you want to be possessed yes, by the message. By message. Yep. Words are irrelevant. You can pick many. I don't mean this. There, there are many words that work. Let's put it that way. And, and so it, it's not the words. It's the way you say them. Pick the words. Yep. Yeah. Now. If we go back a little harder text, if you go back to page one and read the reading aloud has become a true joy for me. If you read me that paragraph, that's a that has a it's an opportunity. It's more like speech. It's not rhymed and metered. There's no apparent cadence, but there's a lot of meaning. And let's see how you can do in conveying the meaning of that paragraph. Of which one? The uh, page one. Reading aloud has become a true joy. Okay, because I didn't read that one. Let me do that. Well, I read it to myself, but I didn't read it out loud. Okay. Oh, see, oh, that, that's another thing. To the extent you can, try and read everything out loud, even in a soft voice, because you're always training yourself to convey message better. You're an actress. You're learning. You're teaching yourself how to act. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I agree. I agree. So hit me. Hit me with that paragraph. Sell it to me. All right. All right. Some things to enjoy reading aloud. Reading aloud has become a true joy for me. I seize any excuse to do it, especially to read aloud to others. Perhaps I am a thespian at heart. Regardless, I love doing it. And no surprise, it continues to improve my speech because when we read aloud, we invariably invari hear our voice at its best. As we read aloud with feeling, we constantly improve our focus on our message and the positive emotions with which we deliver it. Now, from the standpoint of fluency, obviously you get a 10. From the standpoint of feeling, you did much better with that. And it was, it was you know, you got a high grade for feeling, I, you know, eight and nine. The, it was flawed by speed. Speed is- Damn speed. Too yes, fast. it is. Too Look, fast, really? I, I, I'll, I'll read it and listen to the speed. Reading aloud has become a true joy for me. I seize any excuse to do it, especially to read aloud to others. Perhaps I am a thespian at heart. Regardless, I love doing it. And no surprise, it continues to improve my speech because when we read aloud, we invariably hear our voice at its best. As we read aloud with feeling, we constantly improve our focus on our message and the positive emotions with which we deliver it. Speed is your biggest problem. Yeah. And it, it speed kills in, in most everything. And it certainly does in reading. Are you in a hurry? Or are you trying to convey a message? Which is it? You need to make a decision. No, I'm, I'm trying to convey a message. Well, slow down, girl. Take it easy. <clears throat> Take it easy. You're not catching a train. Nobody wants to catch a train. You're talking. They're listening. You're having fun. They're learning something that you know that they don't. So, read, read me silent words. Oh, such a sad one. Okay, let me get to it. Here we go. 
That was so sad. I think I cried when I first read it. Let's see. Let me. <clears throat> now, Silent Words is just one page because I am looking at page five. No, five is, is different for me. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> All right. Silent Words. Behind the smiles, behind the tears, are silent words that no one hears. Conversations well thought out, but censored through my pain and doubt. So much of who is really me that most will never chance to see. From thoughts to words, there's compromise and speech becomes an enterprise. Stuttering is not my choice. I really have a lovely voice. But words too often bond with dread. And then so much is left unsaid. I know quite well what I would say, though it may not always sound that way. If you judge me by my speech alone, the loss you face will be your own. There's much more to me than meets the ear. There's someone special living here. Oh, that's so sad. So sad. You really oh. did that well. Oh. You got somewhere between a nine and a ten on that. Oh. That's oh. pretty good. Oh. So true. I mean, whoever wrote this, so, so true. So sad. Yeah, I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to ask you to read something else that it's a it's a song that my wife wrote for one of our anniversaries and it's on page 20 of my copy it's entitled never say goodbye yeah i don't have that one i don't think what I don't think I have, I printed out, hang on. I don't think I have that one. Hang on, let's see. Wait a minute, I may, I may. Give me a minute, give me a minute. Cause I was having some difficulty with my printer. Um, hang on. No, no, I don't think so. Well, it's, hold on just a minute, hold on just a minute. Cause I can send you that song separately in an email now this isn't the one <clears throat> is this time after time no, no. that no. it's a song called never say goodbye okay and i'm going to send it to you in an email right now <sighs> separately let me get in my email and So maddening when my computer won't do what I ask it to do. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it, it's frozen. Ah. It's frozen. I can't. I'm, I'm trying to get to my email. <laughs> it won't let me get to it. Hold on. Ah. Let me just be sure I don't. Let me see what I have. God. This is a disaster. Oh, 
What's the name of it? One more time. Never say goodbye. Never say goodbye. Okay. I have it. Okay. I have it here. <clears throat> so never yeah. say goodbye. Yeah, this is a song written by my wife. And she plays, she's a great pianist. She went to music conservatory, straight A's and piano. She can play anything she, she can, she's heard or anything sight, she can sight read the heaviest classics. She did it, she's amazing. She was playing solo, she was playing the organ in huge churches at age eight. Oh my goodness. Any event, uh, among other things, she used to write, she used to write romantic ballads. She wrote, and, and she wrote this one for an anniversary. And it's, I, I just think it's incredible. It's my favorite um, song. So you can go ahead and read that to me. Okay. All right. So never say goodbye. I never thought I'd fall in love at first sight. That was for dreamers on a starry night. My heart told me when I looked into your eyes, I'd never say goodbye. When we're alone and you reach for my hand, that loving gesture means you understand. There's no treasure like being with you will never say goodbye. If time should try to end our romance, it wouldn't have a chance. You'd be here, <clears throat> you'll be here safe in my heart. We'll never be apart. Sometimes it seems that we're living a dream. Moments passing in a rushing stream. If I could have one fantasy to fill, I'd make time stand still. If time should try to end our romance, it wouldn't have a chance. You'll be here, safe in my heart. We'll never be apart. If I knew this would be our last day, there's nothing more I need to say to keep the memory of our love alive. We'll never say goodbye. Never say goodbye. Ah, that's so nice. That's so nice. Now you see at the bottom, there's yeah. a link. The bottom https you see that yep at your leisure click on that link and play you'll hear her singing and playing the piano oh she's singing to, oh, oh absolutely oh. yeah she has another guy singing it with her my voice was gone by then i used my voice left me a little bit when i was a little older than you but she has another guy singing it with her. It's really good. You'll love it. No, I'm definitely going to listen to it. Just, isn't that, aren't those great words? They are great words because, no, they are great words. Um, especially the fact that you have nothing more you need to say. Because many times people fail to say all the things they need to say. Yeah. And they have regrets. And there were no regrets. Yeah. So we'll that's our, powerful. We'll have our 50th anniversary this fall. That's, oh, wow. Wow. So back to you and your speech. Um, the way I'm feeling right now is that if you think slow, soft, short, um, and you really do it. You really do it. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're going to sail. Now there are a lot of other things you can you can think that will help, 
but a lot of times keeping it simple is the best way. I mean, smiling helps, pronunciation mm -hmm. helps, a lot of things help, uh, but you can't think everything. And your problem is you talk too fast. Yeah. And that's a very common problem, especially among stutterers. And so you need to slow down. You need to really practice that. Yeah. And speaking in a soft voice is not easy. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And you can tell right away that I am. And when I do, I seem totally composed and relaxed, unintimidating, credible, friendly. It works softly, slowly, softly. And keep it short. Very short. And enjoy yourself, Marshall. Exactly, enjoy Have yourself. Fun. Have fun. It's fun. You're there. There's nothing between you and fluency or eloquence except practice mm -hmm. and more conviction to the message. When we read aloud, you get it. You're reading, you're trying to convey the message. When you do that, you're never going to have a problem speaking. If you have a problem, stop talking. Take a two count. That's one more time. It doesn't two. Start again. Start again. You're fine. You're fine. They are loving listening to you. You know why? Because you're the best speaker in the room. That's why. Like that. Like that. Stops are so important. They let people think. They try harder to understand you. When I used to give talks to huge crowds, there'd always be people talking in the corner. Always. Mm -hmm. Periodically, I would just stop talking. Just stand there. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, and I started, by the time I started again, everyone had stopped talking. They were all looking at me. Then I continued. Try it. It works. They eat out of your hand. When you slow down, when you're calm, when you say it like you mean it, they eat out of your hand. You can do this. Okay. You can do it. So. One last thing. The other thing which is interesting is, which is very common because you've mentioned it, is introductions. So, so I, you know, you think about it, which is probably not the way to do it. I mean, on some level. So I don't like introductions in board. Introductions it, of it what? To, what? Introductions of what? Of myself. Oh. Because, oh. because for example, um, I mean, it's a very common thing to do. Sure. So, do so you mean that, simply saying your name, or do you mean saying a little bit about yourself? Well, I would say saying my name. Well, if I practice, so I, if I practice a spiel, because you kind of have to have a spiel to say like who you are, what you've done. Like it's not necessarily an impromptu thing, but um, so, so, so I get nervous when it's 
it was my time because you know you go I this thing I hate the most is when you go around the room wrong, and it, you know so and so says who they are and then it's your turn because there's anticipation and it's like oh, I used to leave the room no I used work. to leave the room in those situations oh and my so gosh. when my turn came I wasn't there I would excuse my I would get up well, before it gets to me, and I would say to the MC, I'll be right back. <laughs> and I would go ostensibly to the John, and I would go out and I would I would close the door and I would leave it open this much. Oh my God. Through the, and I would wait until they had finished the introductions, and then I would come back in and say, Oh, this is Lee Lovett. He's late by, he didn't get a chance to introduce himself, blah, 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 blah. And I would sit down smiling. I didn't stutter once the whole meeting. But if I'd had to say my name, I would have stuttered. Well, that was then, you know, I was in my 20s. I, yeah, you know something, I may have I even just, done that a few times in my 30s. I may still have done that a few times. Right. But So when it's your turn now, you relish when it's your turn. Oh, you yeah. Go, Yay, it's my turn. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I would say, if I had your name, and it's a rough name. It's a rough name. Oh, I would, I would probably, I would probably do this. I'll change your last name, but um, my name is M A R C H E L L E Marshall Hofstetter H O F S T E D S T E R Marshall Hofstetter. And I am a nephrologist and an internist and a, a CMO. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to be here today and to meet all of you. Thank you. How about that? That's good. What I what I do, one thing I do to to bring up a crutch is if I say my name is Dr. Marshall Hofeld. So it's a filler. So the word sure. doctor is very helpful. So I'm Dr. Marshall Hofeld. Sure. Um, you know, I'm very happy to be here today. So I'm a, okay. a nephrologist and an internist. So these are kind of tongue twisters. And it depends who you have because they may not understand those words. And well, in general, when we meet and greet, they understand those words because it's a Why medical form. Try. Why don't you try? over pronouncing your name my name is dr marshall hofstetter or you know all right i'll do hofstetter yeah i know that i know that but right. we're recording that's right that's right we don't want to use my right so right. we don't use your name right so uh but if you over pronounce it marshall if you want to spell it you can they'd love it because nobody can spell, especially names, because mothers spell them any way they want. So you can spell it, but you don't have to. Marshall, but do it with some drama. Think of it as with drama. Okay. You know, it's it's kind of like, um, I remember, I said this in one of my books, <laughs> that um, I had to uh, introduce people I mean, being their lawyer, if there was a gathering, frequently they would ask me to introduce myself and whoever the speakers were or the guests of honor were and stuff like that. And I hated it. You know, I thought, oh, my God, I have to say all these terrible names. One guy's name, he's now deceased, was George D'Amatio. And, oh, uh, gosh. and gosh, wow. I, I would say it. The, uh -oh. In the Italian way, I would say George Di Matteo. And I also represented Rocky Marciano, the boxer, the heavyweight boxing champion. And he was at some of these functions, and I had to introduce him. And I would do it kind of like a ring announcer. And we have someone known to all of you, our world champion boxer, Rocky Marciano. You know, you can take it to almost any level you want. You can have fun mm -hmm. with it. But Marshall Hofstetter. You know, and smile when you say it. You know, and if you want to spell it, spell it. 
But if you don't want to, that's fine. Dr. Marshall Hofstetter. Okay. You know, <laughs> like the ring announcer. Wearing the pink trunks in the right in the far corner, yeah. weighing 110 pounds. Right. We have the, the star from so and so, Florida. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Right, exactly. Because so that's the one thing that's you know it's so it's it's a tough section of it, and but it's one thing like for example I've had to present reading like those 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 skew bars and being recorded, which I have no issues with doing because all my focus is on reading the line, so I want to make sure I can catch up with it, so I don't worry about it. But it's the anticipation, so you want to. Just sit back and say, listen, when it's my turn, yay, it's my turn. It's hard to know the order because they may start in this corner. They may start in that corner. I may be the first, which yeah. I like being the first. The first is good because they don't worry about it. You know, you, you have an affirmation that says, I love to introduce myself. myself. <laughs> Do you have right. that? Yeah, 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 and it is one of the affirmations. It's I love to say my name, but I love to introduce myself. Right? There you go. I love to introduce, to introduce myself. myself. Oh yes, and you know, do it, do it with some flair. You know, the it it disarms the stuttering guy. He's 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 relying on your being timid and withdrawn and afraid. When when you come out boisterous. Uh, you know, uh, ebullient, uh, dramatic, theatrical. Right. Think of yourself as you're on a stage. You are on a stage. I, I am on the stage. I am on the stage. Take advantage of it. Most of the people in the world would love to be there, or they would love to have the recognition and the approbation and praise normally attendant to those who are on the stage, perhaps undeserved, but nonetheless given. So you're, you're, you're a star in, the, in your universe. Exactly, in my universe, you're right, in my universe. I'm the only, for the meeting, yeah, so you're the, the physician in the room, so you're the medical expert in the room with exactly. the business people, with all the business people, yeah. But you want to think about this, you want to be, you know, sort of a swashbuckling, devil may care, protagonist of whatever your message is. Whatever it is, yep, yeah, yeah. And if it's your name, we begin with that. I'm so pleased to be here today. My name is Dr. La 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 La, and I'm going to say it like I mean it. I want you to know it. Marshalla. Hofstetter. Hofstetter, yes, there you go. And and wink at him, you know? Yeah, right, right, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because we're going to have a crowd on Tuesday at some official groups coming down, but they know me already. And so I'll be, so I'm kind of known in the group already, the rest are not. So, um, so it's going to be a day of introductions and fun. <laughs> Good. Good. Yep. Each time is more fun for you. Right. It's your chance to be a little bit of a ham. Exactly. Exactly. Why not? I love being a ham, even when I stutter. And you know, the funny thing was, in my fraternity in college, um, I was I was a social chairman. So I ran all the events. And one reason I was that is because I sung at every major function of the college for four years. I sung at all of them. And in some cases, I did skits. You know, like I would imitate Red Skelton. Did you ever hear of him? I heard of him, but I don't know the music. Well, he, was a, he was a stand-up comedian who, who uh, was quite funny. And he did... One of his famous skits was where he was advertising different kinds of liquor. And by the end of the ad, he had gotten drunk. 
you know, oh, and, and that was That's the skit, and I used to imitate that, and I did, um, uh, I used to imitate Jimmy Stewart and James Cagney and people like that. I mean, we all, you know, I, I just, I like doing it. It was fun, and I never stuttered when I did that, but if I had to talk straight and introduce right. myself as you're doing, right. or introduce anybody straight. else, right. I couldn't do it. Yeah, if I have to talk about medical things, no issue. But you have to talk straight. You're right. But I mean, you have to put on a different cap. Yep. And so you're you are you're putting on a totally different outfit here. You yeah. know, you've got basically armor, you know, uh protecting you from the stuttering guy. Because look, if you were to if if there's any word that you were to get stuck on, you said something early on uh, that you use the word doctor to help you not have a problem with Marshall. Well, yeah. you you could use, and that's that'll work. But you could use any word in front of Marshall. You could say, "Well, so well, Marshall, so Marshall, and Marshall, I'm Marshall," or you would simply use Marshall as a sound launch. Marshall. Mm -hmm. When you stretch it out and hold it, you can say anything. So. Uh, that's a, those are little things that you can do. You can also hum your way into any word, which is crutch four. Um, Marshall, because once you've got the sound going, you can. it's like a conveyor belt. You can toss words on it. Um, Marshall, say that. Um, Marshall. Once you've started the sound, you have broken the block every time. Marshall, um, Marshall, yeah, and you barely hear the um. No, and like you you, you, you can make really... the um this long, this long, this long, this long, or just uh, or you can make it loud ma ah, uh, or you can make it so soft they can't hear it. Uh, you can. Um, Marshall, um, it'll work That's either an interesting way. Idea. Just make. Um, don't Marshall. worry about how you say it. Just say it. Just uh, say Marshall. It. I just did it very short. Oh, uh, Marshall. You know, and then put the emphasis on Marshall. Say it like phonetically. You want them to see the word as you're saying it. Um, Marshall. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's. it's Hello, my name is. John. It's it's a, I've never heard the name before, so it, it's new to me. Um, I used to spell mine a lot. L E E Lee, and then say it, you know, but you don't need to. You don't need to spell it. But you have a great name. It's so nice. It's L L. Yeah, know? it's it's easy. It's, it's easy. easy. You know, it's Lee Love It. Lee Love It. Lee Love It. Alliterative. Yeah. I mean, so, nice. Nice and it's fun. So look, um, we haven't drilled humming and linking, which we were going to do. It's a very useful thing to know how to do. So let's let's just do a couple of those and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. So say after me and hold your tone as if you're singing to the end of the speech increment. Uh, how are you? Uh, how are you? Uh, uh, where are you going? Uh, where are you going? Uh, Marshall. Uh, Marshall. Uh, Lee. Uh, Lee. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, nephrologist. A uh, nephrologist. Uh, CMO. Uh, CMO. Uh, CMO. A minute. You make a sound, you've broken the block. I see him up. I see him up. Every time. Why? How Why simple do you think can that it is? Be? Why is that? Because it becomes, it just links it. It's just the because way. Because it, the guy, the the myth, the ghost, the, the, the uh, poltergeist floating around, as one of our, my PWS says, a stand up comic. He said, it's kind of like a ghost. He says, it just comes sometimes and wipes me out. And other times it's not there. It can happen when I'm on stage doing a routine or oh when I'm sitting having breakfast, talking to, talking to somebody. 
He said, it's, there, there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason or anything else. And it's true. There's nothing there. But he's always blocked one, one word, one syllable, one letter. And when you, when you say any other word, syllable, or letter, or make any sound, you've broken the block. You broke he releases it. He's just not, he's not, look, this isn't a, this isn't artificial intelligence. You know, it's a, it's a bad habit. It's a and bad when, habit. When you, yeah. when you make a sound, the habit's not there. He, he lost, or she, I think it's a he. I would blame, not blame any woman for stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> um, only 20% of stutterers are women, incidentally. Really? Really? Mostly men? Didn't know that. And I've, uh, I've read that, but more importantly, mm. in my thousand or so con communications, I would say, you know, about 200 of them are women. Mm. So, Interesting. Interesting that yeah. it's not as common in women. You mm. guys don't seem to fall prey to this particular problem as much but they do and um some women they just have problems talking to men period strangers men anyway so um interesting yeah so but you you've got a handle on this thing and you're you're very close but you know the thing is you've got to prove it to yourself unequivocally yes because You're right but you've got to do it enough times mm -hmm. that it's kind of old hat, oh hum, ha, you know, I got to introduce myself again. And you're not thinking words and you're not nervous about it. And and you you should be, just as you're working on your anger, you're, you're, you're working on being uh, anxious about saying you're introducing yourself. You're not going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we have free choice to accept or reject thoughts. Mm -hmm. Nothing compels us to think anything except our own desires. So mm -hmm. use your mental switch and dictate mm -hmm. your thoughts. Believe mm -hmm. that you can improve and you will. Thank mm -hmm. you, Frank S. Caprio, psychiatrist. Um, so that's that's our daily declaration. That's our, our, our slogan, our, um, it's our basic rule. Mm -hmm. You get to program your mind mm -hmm. and you got in trouble because you didn't program it as to your speech. You didn't, you probably didn't program it at all about anything except inadvertently what you memorized and learned in school and so forth. But you didn't overtly program your mind until when, until you got into this program and you're now learning that you can program your mind about anything. You're telling me that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I used it for flying. I used it for anger because there's someone that annoys me at work. She's awful, but I laugh at it now. Exactly. And and you have to because it's easier That's and right. it's harmonious. And you, but you have to. You have yeah. to control your mind. And in that situation, same with speaking, you have to have good thoughts and you have to control these urges or control this, you know. And it actually is, is it's exhilarating because you feel so good at the end of the day. You say, wow, I had those four bumps in the road where I didn't react. Exactly. And or even internally react. And it, but it's important in life. Well, stay with it, stay with everything, keep doing your twice daily mind training treatments, read aloud, whatever it is you're reading. If you're not bothering anybody, read it aloud. And uh, the more you read aloud with feeling, the better you're going to speak. And the sooner you'll, you'll, you're, you'll you, that's a form of reprogramming your mind because you're hearing yourself be fluent all the time. Of course, you're fluent you know, way over 90% of the time anyway, you're 97 or 8% fluent now. But we want you to prove to yourself that all these boardrooms are simply places where you're going to excel. That's when you're going to be at your very best. You're going to do your best speaking right there. Every time. Because you're in control of it and you can do it. Softly, slowly, lots of stops, 
short increments and lots of passion smile and joy and you're going to have a wonderful time and you're going to stay with it until you know what i just said is true it's true yeah and when you know that then you've kind of solved the problem that brought you to us and you're then in another stage of you're learning to um to elevate your life through mind training Coming to SAM meetings, I know you're busy, but if you can come, it helps you. It helps others. Um, anything you can do to help us to spread the word would be great. I know you don't have, nobody does, but there are 80 million people out there and lots of them are suicidal and it's really sad, you know. And it's there's no reason for it. We need to stop it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. Have a wonderful time. All right. You, thank you. Thank Great you. Chatting.